Hi, my name is Ian Dennison. I work at GF Strong Rehab Center in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I'm an equipment specialist and I'm here to talk to you today about bearings. Uh, I'll talk to you about identifying where they are, uh, checking whether they need replacement and also how to uh, set them and how to replace them. So uh, to, to check a bearing, what you need to do is free the wheel and let it spin. Now every wheel has a uh, has a heavy spot, so when it stops, it will spin back. You don't have to do a wheel of fortune spin here. Uh, you just want to make sure that there's no binding. So this wheel is obviously spinning uh, very clean, clear, uh, very easily. Uh, now we know it's not too tight, so to make sure that the bearing isn't too loose, free the wheel again, and you want to move the wheel in and out this way to see whether it is too loose. You will always get a little bit of play because the, what's holding the wheel on are these two tiny little balls that fall into a groove. And because that's a rounded surface and the inside of the axle housing, the, uh, axle housing is a square surface, you're always going to get a little bit of play in and out. So these bearings are uh, okay. Same thing with the caster wheel. You want to spin it, make sure there's no binding. These wheels will not spin back, generally speaking, because there's not as much flywheel effect. And then see whether there is side to side play in the wheel. And this one does have side to side play. I very much doubt that you'll be able to see it. I'm moving it top and bottom like that. So you can hold the fork absolutely steady. So there's a little bit of play here that we don't need, and that can contribute to casting process. So we're going to adjust that. And there are also two stem bearings here. This is the caster stem. There's a bearing here and a bearing here. And we want to make sure that uh, they're doing their job. Now to test the caster stem bearings, you actually don't want it to spin freely. Right? Because the caster stem, when you're wheeling along, the caster stem just makes slight deviations as you're uh, changing direction, whereas the wheels are spinning like crazy. So they have a slightly different uh, purpose and we have a slightly different setting. What I like to do with caster uh, stem bearings is set the wheel at uh, either 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock and let it drop. And I don't want it to, uh, I want it to fall, but if I set it at 7 o'clock or 5 o'clock, I want it to stay there so there's a little bit of tension. On this one there's too much uh, freedom of movement and this one too much freedom of movement. So I'm going to show you how to adjust both of those. Alright, if you need to adjust the uh, rear axle, you take it off and you'll see that on the uh, plunger side, on the quick release side, there are threads and a three quarter inch nut. On the other side there's sometimes a flat spot but you'll see the balls. So what we have to do, these threads allow us to adjust that nut in and out. If we move it in, it shortens this distance and reduces the amount of play that we have. So in order to adjust that, you get a three quarter inch wrench or a three quarter inch socket and because there's no flat spot on this axle, we have to use a half inch wrench to fix this side. So I'm going to put my wrench on here, wrench on here, and then see I use the balls to fix the, uh, to allow me to turn that relative to the outside. That shortens the axle. And that lengthens the axle. This was fairly well adjusted, so I'm going to leave it where it was, put it back on. We know what the test is, spin the wheel, make sure it spins back, move it in and out, not too much play. So, move down to the caster wheel. We've already established that this one spins a little too freely. I'm going to take this off so we've got less visual distraction. So the wheel spins freely, but there's too much play side to side. 
I'm going to take these bearings completely off because um, uh, I want to show you how the uh, this the, the front wheel uh, front caster bearings are the ones that require the most maintenance because they're the closest to the ground and they pick up all the hair. This particular chair doesn't have very much hair in it, which is a godsend, but uh, not very good for the video. And I like to take these off in that orientation so everything doesn't fall out quite so easily. And if I keep my other wheel intact, I'll see where all my uh, bits are. So this is what I have. I have a wheel, a spacer, a spacer, and that sort of goes through and an that secures it. Here are my bearings, one on each side. And they spin clear, uh, freely. Um, to adjust, so, so pull all your hair out, all the hair from here, and um, make sure it's as clean as it can be. Right, there's no need to lubricate this because what the lubricant does is it acts like a glue and helps to attract hair and dust and debris. Right? There is a need to lubricate that, but we're going to just clean it for now. Alright, so looking at this bearing, um, the, the silver bit on the middle of the ring is called the inner race. The silver bit on the outer side is called the outer race, and all movement should happen between those two races. Right? It's not uncommon for there to be no movement whatsoever at that part of the bearing, and when that happens, what's happening is the inner race is spinning on the axle, so the inner race is actually moving relative to the axle, whereas it should stay stationary and all the movement happen within behind the black bit. Um, I'm going to remove the black bit so you can see what's happening behind. Okay. The ring compromise, comprises of the uh, inner race, which is the inner silver uh, ring, the seal that you can see there, the black part, and the outer race. Now all the movement that happens at the wheel should actually be happening inside underneath the seal. Um, the inner race should stay stationary relative to the axle and the outer race should stay stationary relative to the wheel. So all the movement should happen inside the seal where the actual bearings are. Um, it's not uncommon for the bearing to be completely seized and not allow any movement at all. If that's the case then what happens is all the movement happens between the inner race and the axle. So the wheel spins there, and that is not a good low resistance um, place to be doing your to be achieving the movement. Now to check what's happening behind the uh, behind the seal, use a pin and work your way as carefully as you can underneath the seal. You can either use a pin. Sometimes a knife works better. Right, so I'll be able to pop the seal out right there without damaging it too much, hopefully. And there you can see what we call a caged bearing. Um, there's a, the, the, there are uh, one, two, three, four, seven balls there, and they're kept equidistant by a cage that, um, that uh, sits over the top of them and allows the movement to happen uh, in a very low friction way. So these, these look a bit dry, there's uh, hardly any grease, but they do feel good. Um, I'm going to be talking about bearings in a different video. But uh, that's how you check. Uh, you don't often have to take these off, but uh, if you don't have access to a replacement bearing, then uh, you may have to do that. I'm not going to clean these bearings out, they look, uh, they look feel like they're clean, but I am going to repack them with grease. So I just smear grease in there, give it some movement to try and get the grease under the balls. 
and I kind of pressed with my with my thumb while I was doing this to to uh, give some pressure, and then I can put this seal back on, make sure I put it on the right way, make sure it's sealed, and then wipe off all the grease that you put on. There shouldn't be any grease evident. All right. And this is the time you can use WD-40 if you want because it's a really good cleaner. It's not, uh, it's not a particularly good lubricant, but it will clean off the grease. Okay, so when we reassemble this, we're going to put the, the, uh, this through the fork and then a spacer on. And the spacer is the same um, size as the inner race because as I mentioned the inner race should not be moving relative to the axle. Then there's a spacer between the two bearings, the outer spacer, the fork and then the nut. Okay. As I use this as a reference so I know which hole to put it in. I'm going in the top hole. This is one of those areas of wheelchair maintenance, you often need two of the same size wrench if you haven't got a ratchet. Alright, so you tighten that up until it spins freely, that doesn't, you can see it binding. Back it off a little bit. By the way, both bearings are probably in the same state as each other, so a little bit dry it would have been a good idea for me to uh, loop the other one as well. Okay, so that obviously spins freely now. I want to make sure it's not too loose, and I do this side to side test. It does, it's too loose. So it's just a very small adjustment, still spins freely, still got side to side play, spins freely, side to side play. Alright, no side to side play. And it's a bit draggy, so you can see how fine you have to be with that. Just a bit draggy still. That's good. And no side to side play. Alright, so that's that one figured. Now we move to the caster stem, and I don't want that to be as loose as it is. So I have to remove the, uh, the dust cover, and sometimes you can slide a fingernail under there. Sometimes you have to use a knife just to get it started. Be careful with these snap off blades because uh, you kind of put in leverage where it doesn't uh, want to go. And then when you get it wide enough, you can get a screwdriver underneath. So take your time with this and bring it off parallel rather than trying to jam it off. There we go. There's got a little o-ring there to make sure to help it uh, seal and stay secure. Keeps all the crap out of the top because this is a prime area for food and uh, different liquids to go in. So you need a three-quarter inch socket for this because the nut is on the top that secures the axle, uh, the axle um, to the fork. So what you do is put your wrench on there and then turn the wheel to tighten up the caster. Right? So as I say, I want it at 3 o'clock, I want it to drop, or at 9 o'clock I want it to drop. It's not really dropping. So loosen it off just a little bit. Dropping, put it at five o'clock, still dropping. So now it's tightening up. So you can see how subtle these adjustments are. It's certainly not a ham fisted approach that you want to take. Three o'clock, nine o'clock, seven o'clock, so that we'll go a little bit tighter. Three o'clock, nine o'clock, seven o'clock, 
five o'clock. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe just a tiny bit tighter. There we go. And I think it's in the too much play, which is almost impossible to be. Put your cap back on. You can lubricate this with, um, it doesn't hurt to just make sure your, um, your seals stay stay uh, healthy uh, with a little bit of silicone lubricant. So I'm putting that on the seal and I'm wiping off any, any extra. Put this on, wipe it off again because I don't want any dust or uh, debris to stick to the uh, to the silicone spray that I put on. All right, so that's um, rear wheel bearings, caster wheel, and caster stem. Two, four, six, and then the same on the other side. Good.